and welcome back. <laughs> it has been a really, really like long but fun few days. Um, so before I start the video, I am going to tell you where I've been and then I will get on to the video because I'm just, I'm really tired is what I am. I'm really, 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 really fucking tired. Um, and not in like a bad way, in a good, wholesome way. Um, I celebrated my anniversary over the weekend with Ed. We went to the aquarium. We had Chinese food at this lovely restaurant, which did just the most spectacular food, if a little chilly and if, uh, you know, I couldn't handle it as well as I thought I could. But it was amazing. I loved it. Um, and I mean, I would reveal, <laughs> I would tell you which restaurant, but I don't want people guessing at where I live. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, all I'm going to say is that it was an amazing Chinese restaurant. And if any of the waiters are watching, which I highly doubt, you guys are fucking amazing. Thank you for such a wonderful meal. Um, we went to the aquarium, as I said, and we saw some cool stuff, like stuff I didn't expect to see. We saw jellyfish. I, like, I did not think about how cool that was going to be. I got my gift from Ed, which I'm really scared of showing you how messy my room is, but it's the Wolverine poster over there. It's amazing. I love it. Um, but sorry, my room is like a kid's room. It's got posters everywhere. Um, and uh, we went to see Sto Toy Story 4, which was amazing, for also for our anniversary. Um, and I just want to say thank you, Ed, for spending the last year with me. And I hope to spend, you know, see a few more anniversaries with you in the least, you know, because I love you and you're the best. Um, even though you are sometimes the most annoying person in the world, it's a good kind of annoying. Um, so straight after my anniversary, I had to shoot off to Milton Keynes for a BPS accreditation at my university, which is the Open University. Um, so I was there for a night and a morning and now I'm back. Uh, and that was really fun. I'd never been to a different, like a whole different city and stayed overnight by myself. Um, and it was an interesting experience, it's certainly not an experience I would have had if I remained religious and with my family. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of people, I got a lot of hacks for my upcoming modules. And it, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really happy is what I'm trying to say. I'm just really happy. I've had so many good experiences in the last four days. Um, I have like a, a, a load of paperwork to do now <laughs> to fill out my expenses form because they're going to cover that. They're going to cover everything. And I'm so like happy about that because I didn't have to spend a ton of money to go there and come back without, you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to explain is that they gave me so much and took so little of me that it, it's truly, it is truly overwhelming that people can do that. Um, and for that reason, this video, I didn't really know what to do it on because I asked for suggestions on what to do it on. And I feel like you guys are really intense. Like you want me to talk about really intense subjects when like I'm not in an intense mood. I will talk about intense subjects when they come up to me, like I did with my slavery live stream, for example, where I was just really angry and I needed to get all of that out of my system. I will be really intense when it is time for that. But when I am like just in pure happiness, just in pure, like, I am in my, you know, nirvana, in my zen, in just, I'm just happy. I can't be like that, so I can't talk about really, really serious things. But, um, the Donnie Darko one, who I will tag in the Twitter post for this video, um, he had suggested talking about, um, people not being able to satisfy other people, um, which I don't really know how to phrase this. It's, it's just a failure to, I think, make every single person in your life be happy with you. And it's definitely something I've experienced as someone who has been disowned by their entire family. Um, so I, I think that that's a good, like a, a good topic to talk about, um, in a positive way. And 
you know, cover the ne negative aspects, but let's look at it in a positive way. Um, I was half thinking about doing this about education because I had just gone to my university campus, which I had never gone to because the Open University is an online university. Um, and, you know, I didn't think they had like a real campus, but I had gone there and it was amazing and I took some pictures and I definitely intend to go back to Milton Keynes to see that university because I was just like, it was my first like, I'm you know, realisation where I'm in university, even though I've completed an entire module already. Um, but yeah, I want to talk about people not, you know, being happy with you for whatever reason. You not, uh, me as an individual or you as an individual not being able to please someone or a lot of people in your life. And I've definitely experienced this. And I don't, if I'm completely honest, I don't really know how you get over that except, you know, just coming into your own and coming into your own and not giving a fuck about anybody because that's kind of where I got. Um, but I would like to discuss some examples I had in my life as always. I'm not here to steal your religion, but I will talk about your religion um, if you're a Muslim because that is how I was raised. Um, and also this is by no means advice that you should follow. It is just simply what I did. And if you feel like your circumstance is very similar to mine, you can use the tips, but I don't recommend this for every single situation. You really need to play your situation by ear. Um, and yeah, I think that's all the disclaimers that I can give for this video. I don't know. I'm tired and I'm, you know, living. So the first sort of instance that I can think of where I felt like I really had to make someone proud was in education. Um, so my mother want, really desperately wanted to see me do well and I'm not going to advise this to anybody. I don't think it's a good idea for most people to do. But what I would do in school is that anytime I had like a pretend test or a mock test or a test you take before your actual exam that will like determine what you're going to get in the exam, I would score very low on those exams or as low as I think I could get because I wanted to manage the expectations of my teachers and of my parents. So uh, in an exam where I would normally, or I thought that I had the potential of getting an A or an A star or the highest possible grade, I would aim for like a C. And in an exam where um, I wasn't gonna do too well, like I was gonna get, well, you know, do well, but not as well as people wanted me to. Um, so for example, in IT, I would aim for like a C or a, like I would think that I would get a C or a D in the real exam but if I were to take the mock exam I would just fail I would just get as low a grade as possible because I wanted to manage the expectations of my teachers so when I did come out the other end getting a C or a B which I didn't in the end in the case of IT it would be you know a good thing it would be positive um, and it's also what I've it's also how I found me managing my own expectations is by thinking about the worst possible situation and saying, for example, with this weekend, if, for example, I didn't get to go to the aquarium and we just sort of sat at home, that's the worst possible thing that could happen. But is that really so bad, you know? So I would, like, from a very young age, I guess I would manipulate people <laughs> and I would manage people's expectations of my grades. Even though I understood that it was really important for me to get a good grade, I understood that, but I would manage people's expectations by intentionally getting a lower grade than I actually thought I could attain. Um, and I don't, like I said, I don't advise anybody to do that because in the circumstance where you can't take that exam or you miss that exam for a legitimate reason, like if you're in hospital or whatever, they will take that predicted grade. So they, in my case, they would have taken that C, B, D, whatever, the fail, and put it as a real one. But like the actual grade at the end of the year. But because of none of that happened to me, thankfully, it, you know, it didn't translate in the same way. Um... And, you know, all of my teachers were surprised, like, oh, you got an A star in this. Oh, you got a B in this. Oh, you got a C in this. When we were really expecting you to just do fuck all, um, it, I, I felt like it was a good way to manage people's expectations. Now, with other things, uh, things aside from education, which, you know, a lot of my family didn't really hold that important in my... Uh, stupid. Um, 
in terms of like marriage and family and having kids and who you marry and where you get married and how your religion was and all that, that was a little bit more difficult to manage. That was significantly more difficult to manage because I was not helping myself because I was trying to be the biggest and the best Muslim on the face of the planet. In terms of <sighs> disappointing people, <laughs> essentially, um, I would always get in, the only arguments I had with my mother was that I really didn't want to marry someone who was Bengali because I wasn't attracted to Bengali men. Um, and she really wanted me to get married to a Bengali because in Bengali families, Bengalis only really get married to Bengalis. And I did not want that. I didn't want to get married to a Bengali man. And I would have argument after argument after argument. Really, it was just her yelling at me. I mean, I, I did my best not to talk back to my mum because I had a lot of respect for my mum. And also it was drilled into me that I could not argue back with my mum. So I usually it would just be like, mum, what if I got married? to this kind of person and then she would you know spew her sort of ignorant slash slightly and mostly racist stuff about that kind of person um <laughs> i don't know if i can hold my mom accountable to that <laughs> basic like it, it's disappointing when you look back and you think about that kind of stuff but also she wasn't raised in a diverse community I don't know if I can hold my mom to that. She was never toxic to anyone. Like she wouldn't avoid people because of their race. But when it came to talking about who I married, she was extremely racist. Um, so those were the things. And I was determined. I was like, I am not going to marry a Bengali man um, at all. But then I soon realized that my opinion wasn't really that important because if I didn't have a good reason for denying a proposal, it basically meant that I was getting married. Um, and that was one thing. Marriage was a huge thing. And I've done a video on arranged marriages um, on my channel before where I talk about all the different arranged marriages that I had. There was one very significant one at the end, like towards the end of my relationship with my family, um, which was a nightmare to navigate. But um, I've done a video on arranged marriages and how to sabotage arranged marriages if you really, really want to get out of them. But you can't directly say, I don't want to get fucking married. Um, so I've done videos on those, but that was a big obstacle for me to sort of, it was a big hurdle for me because a lot of people broke ties with me because I refused engagements, um, and things like that. Uh, the other thing was just me being, people just expected me to be really, really religious, essentially. And especially towards the end where I was losing my faith, you know, I had taken off my niqab, not because I was losing my faith, but because... I just could not wear it anymore. I couldn't breathe in it and I couldn't go outside, wear it and breathe in it. So people were sort of giving me, you know, dirty looks because of that, even though nobody else in my family wore it, except for one aunt who started wearing it after I started wearing it. Um, so I didn't really get that. Like, none of you wear it, so why are you judging me, you know? Um, and the other thing was, when I started wearing a very, you know, very loose interpretation of hijab as I started losing my faith a lot of people came up to me and they were kind of like look we're just trying to advise you we're just trying to be helpful which they weren't but you know this in their mind they were um and they're just like stop dressing like a fucking whore is the general basis of what they were saying and I like I wasn't dressing like really inappropriately I would wear like long sleeves like a long top some loose trousers, a headscarf, you know, I would dress like an everyday average non-Salafi Muslim, essentially, and they looked at me like I was dressing like a whore, but the, hypo the hypocrisy in that, and this is one of the ways that I kind of like gave myself a pass, was when they were young, they didn't wear any of that, they didn't dress modestly at all, my grandfather, you know, tried to instill this modernity in them so that they wouldn't you know, wear, wear hijabs and wear, they would wear Western clothes and jeans and, you know, low cut tops and dye their hair and color their hair and, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, my mom, especially because she was like, she was really, she was really proud of how religious she was coming from Bangladesh because her grandfather was like the imam of the village. And she would like chat shit sometimes, sometimes it wasn't like her strong suit. She didn't like doing it, but sometimes she would chat shit about 
some of my aunts and be just like oh when they were younger when they went to like the weddings of your other uncles they would wear like really really low cut um showa kameezes and you could see their breasts <laughs> it's just it's just funny hearing her talk like that because she was never that kind of person but there were like specific people in my family that she really didn't like and she would chat ch ch shit about them um but that, that's what I mean. Like when they were my age, they never, they never did that. They got to have their femininity. And now that they're old, they, they start chatting shit and start being like those typical Indian aunties that just stand around and judge you because you're not dressing exactly like them, because you're not bitter like them. Um, and this is also what it is. It's, it's a massive projection. It's like, I have to be this way, so you have to be this way. I got married to someone I don't like and had kids with that person so you have to do that now and it's bitter it's really bitter and petty and childish and stupid you should never want something bad for future generations because you're perpetuating a cycle but that is exactly what they want to do is they want to perpetuate a cycle my mother was was naive I'm not gonna say that she wasn't naive and she definitely wanted me to get married but it was she wanted me to get married to get out of my dad's house and for her that was the only option for someone who was a Muslim girl who had who essentially had no skills in the real life and liked poems and literature um, so for her that was the only way she could see me leaving my dad's house before she passed away with my aunts it was more like oh you need to get married because I'm fucking miserable and you should be the same way and we should be able to talk about the same things and if you don't get married then how are we going to talk about your marriage you know how am I going to get involved in your wedding and plan what you're going to wear like n the wedding was going to be all planned by my aunts and the groom side like I had no say in it the wedding was already set up Bef like even after I refused the proposal it's fucking crazy um so it one of those one of the things that I did to sort of break that the expectation that everybody held on me and the way I like didn't care that I was disappointing people in my family was just to throw the same shit at them like even if I didn't directly say it to them I still can't really talk back to them because I was raised in a way where talking back to your elders was like a bad thing um but in my head I would throw around those things like they never had to do what I had to do no one else in the family wore a niqab at 11 years old no one else had a headscarf on at 11 years old no one was a practicing Muslim up until like five years ago so why the fuck are they going so hard on me because I don't want to do it anymore, you know? And it's just a massive projection. And the other thing, the other thing was um, me leaving my house. Everybody cut me off when I left um, my uncle's house. I was living with my uncle after I left my dad's house. Me leaving my house. One of my aunts, the same aunt that had sent me those awful texts a while back that you may have seen, I did a video on it. Um, that aunt had left home because she couldn't her father had not let her stay in college basically and he wanted to marry her off she had run away from home took shelter in at a woman's shelter and did not come back home until she was 28 and she had the audacity she had the gall to have a go at me because i left home like the hypocrisy the hypocrisy you did the exact same thing but for some reason i can't do it like, why are you disappointed in me for doing exactly what you did? I know you couldn't fulfill your dreams and your life goals without coming back and begging to get married because you wanted to have a kid and you wanted your father to approve the husband. You know, I get that. But why does that standard have to fit me? Like, why do you have to go off about that? I know you have your regrets, but why did, why did, why are you projecting your insecurities and the things you couldn't do on me? Like, I don't get it. And the other thing, in terms of education, which is why I really, really wanted to do a video on this, and I still do. If you guys want me to do a video on that, please let me know. Um, the only thing my family expected me to do in terms of a job is childcare, and I hate little kids I like I do not mind my siblings because I know my siblings and I, I like I understand them but me working with little kids is literally like me putting me in 
in a cage like it is literally doing that i get ptsd if you put me around little kids to look after them i hate it i can manage one or two i cannot manage like a lot of little kids but that was the only expectation my family had for me in terms of like future work because it's impossible in london for a couple to live in a home rent out a place and both people not to be working it's impossible um, so the only thing that people were like, oh, once you get married, you can do like a, a, a childcare course. Like, are you fucking kidding me? You're going to, that's your expectation of me was to just like get married, birth children and then live and work with children. Like that is your expectation. I'm sorry. Fuck no. I'm not doing that. That is not what I'm doing. I'm, I'm sorry. Like I like working with teenagers because at least you can engage with teenagers. But the, th the problem they had with teenagers is, oh, you're going to be talking to a lot of boys who are not your mahram. As if, like, 14-year-old boys were just going to harass me all day. Like, they're annoying, but they're not that bad. They're not that bad. And also, even if they were, why is that my, like, why is that my responsibility if other boys are harassing me, you know? Like, and they're, like, way below, way below me. Like, they're so much younger than me why is that my problem you know and it's just all these little things like the hypocrisy and the you know the standard that they hold you to doesn't apply to them it doesn't apply to them at all um and i don't know if that's the same in your family i don't even know what this video is in or i just feel like i'm ranting and venting um but the standard that a lot of my family members held for me was com you know they they didn't hold that standard for themselves you know they could forgive themselves for the things that they did in their past but they couldn't could never see that for me um there was one time at my cousin's wedding which was one of the last muslim weddings that i went to um my aunt and my two aunts were there um and i didn't i i was not about it i was having a stressful week as it is because my cousin was getting married and it was kind of driving me a little insane and making me question my life um so my two aunts were there and I really was not about it and people just kept pushing me towards them like go say hi go hug them like I know you guys don't get along if I don't fucking get along with someone don't push me towards them I feel like that's common sense I feel like someone was trying to break the wedding because Bengali religious weddings are typically very boring typically so I feel like some people on my on our side of the family were just trying to create drama and they did because I was bawling I was crying I could not say anything back to anybody because I was that was the place I was in in my life and I was just crying. And then people were saying, oh, why are you fucking crying? Don't fucking cry. Like, of course I'm going to fucking cry. You just made me do something I didn't want to do. And then, like, uh, after that, people started coming over and being like, oh, my God, why didn't you want to see us? Like, I... Because you hate me. Like, you literally fucking hate me. And I hate you. So why would I want to be anywhere near that, you know? You are constantly disappointed in me. You hold me to a standard that you feel like is important for me to reach, even though those aren't my goals. And, you know, you every second that you have to lecture me, you lecture me on. Like, why would I want to be around that? And why would you want to be around someone you view as a constant disappointment? Stop. Fucking stop. I'm sorry. I've gone, like, way off tangent. But my point is... The way that I got over all of that, like all the pressure to be a certain way, to do a certain thing, is to just stop giving a fuck. Like these people are pure hypocrites. They are pure hypocrites who are unsatisfied with their lot in life because they, they did not have the power and the strength and the support, probably, to do actually what they wanted to do. And they, you know, regressed and they came back to a way of life to suit the family. They sacrificed their own goals for the family and they're not happy with that. And they're bitter about it and they're trying to enforce it on the younger members of the family. You need to stop giving a fuck about that, in my opinion. I stopped giving a fuck about it. Like, I'm not going to be like this. I don't want to be like you. I don't want to look back on my life like 20 to 30 years from now and being like what the fuck did I do with you know I just wasted my time I married someone I wasn't happy with I had a bunch of fucking kids that I hate because I wasn't ready to have them 
and now my you know my nieces and my nephews are growing up and I just want to be the worst fucking person to them like why why would you want to do that why it doesn't make any sense for you to continue that way of being it's a cycle and it is in my opinion again you don't have to believe everything I'm saying in my opinion it is my you know duty to break that cycle which is what I've done and I've left my home and I'm breaking that entire way of life I'm the oldest grandchild on my father's a granddaughter on my father's side um, and for the grand boys the grandchildren who are boys they're fine they can do whatever they like they don't even have to turn up to eat they don't even have to turn up at my grandma's house they can do whatever the fuck they like my the oldest grandson on my dad's side has been living you know with his girlfriend for years Nobody has said a fucking word about it. But the moment I stop dressing like I used to, it becomes a big deal. The moment I don't want to get married, it becomes a big deal. Not even that I have a boyfriend. Not, not even that. The fact that I don't want to get married and I want to have an education, it becomes a big deal. Why? Because I'm a girl and I deserve to be oppressed. That is why. Um, and you just have to realize that. Like, I understand the need to for people to love you and accept you, but sometimes it's just not going to be like that, especially in a situation as toxic as a Muslim family. To love and respect you like you want, you know, you want them to. They're not going to because of the way they've been raised and the way that their psyche is built. Like I'm telling you, like, my aunt left my granddad's house because she didn't want to get married she wanted to be an independent woman she wanted to finish her education and she came back she regressed and now she probably regrets it because she hates the man she's married to she can't stop complaining about him and she like hates her kids she can't stop complaining about her fucking kids and, and now she hates me because i didn't want to be the same way and it's extremely hypocritical for her to be like that and she didn't see that um and yeah that's just how i've gone about fighting that disappointment and i like i have done also a video about love and how i didn't really discover what love was until i left my family because i felt like my family never really loved me like not really not really like you can you can murder a person and will still love you. I can feel that love for the boys in my family because my dad literally beat me into the fucking ground. I reported him and they all took his side. Like they've all forgiven him for that. Um, and they uh, just, you know, staunchly refuse to forgive me, which is so apparent that they love the boys, but the girls do not deserve that same kind of love because you know, they never got that kind of love. And now they feel like it's unfair for anyone else to have that, you know? And it's it's ridiculous because this is another thing. And I might get emotional saying this. So bear with me. When I was going through that phase, when my dad was just the worst, he was, you know, periodically beating me, beating the kids, just raising hell in our house. Someone one of my step not one of my step my stepmother who was only my stepmother for three weeks actually tried to commit suicide in my house my aunts would listen to me cry on the phone about that day after day day after day after day after day and they no one would do anything they held one intervention one in the two years that this was happening one intervention where they were like stop being like this like it's not healthy and that was it that was all they did that was all they fucking did and then i reported him and everyone was like call the police and tell them you just it's a lie you made it up and you were just emotional my brother would steal money from me like not like one or two two pounds like brothers do he would steal everything i had he would steal 200 pounds 60 pounds you know which was at the time everything I had and I wasn't like spending it on something haram I would just take the kids out for like sweets or whatever to Lidl and then come back within like the same hour and it, it, it the, the massive like double standard there like they can do anything 
my dad could have killed me and he would still be forgiven for that but me leaving my home which was toxic for me no one has been able to forgive me for that no one no no one and it's horrendous and nobody should have to feel like that oh my god fucking crying i hate it nobody should have to feel like people are disappointed in them because they made the best possible decision they could have and I hate it and I know it looks like right now that I regret that decision but I don't it's one of the toughest decisions I had to make but it's also one of the best decisions I ever made for myself and for my family it was the one thing that I could do to protect them because I didn't know I did not know what was going to happen the next day. Like, what if he beat one of the kids so badly that they would have to go into hospital? Would I have to lie for him then? And say, like, no, he just, you know, fell down the fucking stairs. I wasn't going to do that. That man hurt me every single day that I was in that house without my mother. He hurt me every single day, emotionally or physically, and my aunts would hear about it. My family members, people who are my blood relatives and are, you know, really pressing me now. Oh, you should just go back to your father. He might forgive you. They heard me cry every single fucking day. And they're disappointed in me for leaving that situation. It's ridiculous. And if you are living like that, you should be proud that you are going against such backward, like, upsetting things. Because it's, it's really difficult. It's really, really difficult to go against everyone. Everyone you know, everyone you love, everyone you thought you could trust. It's really difficult to go against all of them and be like, fuck this, I'm out. Fuck this. And you really do have to do that. You really do have to go, this is enough. Like, fuck this. I'm fucking done. Are you fucking kidding me? You want me... Like, I'm kind of venting right now. You want me to ask forgiveness from the man who almost fucking killed me. Almost fucking killed me. You want me to ask forgiveness from that man. And the reason, like, there doesn't have to be a reason. But the reason he almost fucking killed me was because he thought I was using the computer, one, which I wasn't. I was just lying on the couch that morning. And because I was letting the kids watch some fucking cartoons. That is why he almost fucking killed me. You want me to ask forgiveness from that man for that? Like, for reporting him because he almost fucking killed me? Are you, are you, are you insane? And every single one of them, every single one of them were either on his side or were silent or were saying like, oh, you shouldn't have done this. Like, what was I supposed to do? What did you expect me? Did you just want me to die quietly and then you could all be sad and mourn and then wait for the next kid to fucking die? Like, what? If that is the, I'm sorry, I'm like, <laughs> if that is the barometer for your disappointment, for anyone's disappointment, fuck you, you deserve it. Like, if, if you are going to be disappointed in me for making the best possible decision I could have made for myself and for my family, you can fuck right off and be disappointed. I don't fucking care. You have to come into your own. You have to fight for yourself. Fight for what you love and what you respect and what you want to do. It is your life. You only have one. I'm fucking emotional. You only have one and you deserve to spend it however you want to spend it. 
If you want to be a practicing Muslim, fine, go for it. If you want to get married at 21, have some kids, go for it. As long as it's you, what you want to do, and you're not doing someone else's vision. As long as you're not doing something, some, what someone else is covertly telling you, go for it. It is your life. You are the master of your destiny. You should do whatever you want. Okay? Write your own story. Be your own person. And that is not to say, as I have said, that you can't follow someone else's guidance. If you want to do that, do it. But always remember that it's your right, your, you know, your life, and you have the agency to make that decision. Um, and I think I've said <laughs> as much as I can on this topic. I didn't think I would get as emotional as I did. But I did, um, and I don't regret it, uh, because I feel like that that gives this some authenticity. People will be disappointed in you. That is a fact of life. You could, you're never going to make every single person in your family, in your life, all your friends, you're never going to make everyone happy. And if people truly love you and respect you and care for you, they will love you regardless of what you do. If people cut you off and fuck around and ask you to, you know, be someone else or change yourself so that they'll accept you, those people don't love you. And they don't le deserve your love. And I'm still learning that because it's very difficult to break attachments that you had for years and years and years. So... In my opinion, if people had like just ir irrationally and unreasonably disappointed in you for something, even though it is completely normal you for you to be in that position or do that thing, take it with a grain of salt and really assess this person's intentions is all I'm going to say. I'm not going to advise you to do anything. I'm not going to advise you to leave your home, to leave your families, to do any of that. All I'm saying is sometimes people aren't worth pleasing if, you know, it's at a loss to yourself. Um, but with that, thank you for watching this video. I'm going to try and edit this to the best of my ability because there was a lot of tangents. Um, and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Hopefully it won't be as, emo as emotional. I didn't expect to be as emotional. Um, I might put this in my mental health category because it feels like it fits perfectly with that. But... If you like this video, please do like and share. Um, if you didn't like it, please tell me why and also dislike it. Um, you know, whichever. I like ratings, so go for it. Um, and yeah, uh, if you would like to talk to me about this, if you're in a similar situation, please feel free to contact me. My inbox is currently open on Twitter, so you can DM me whenever you want. Um, or you can email me if you prefer that, and my email address is linked to this uh, YouTube channel at somewhere in the about section, probably. Um, so thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one, and I'm sorry for crying. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but it's just, it's a lot. It's a lived experience, I'm still getting over it, so, you know, that is my excuse. Um, thank you, and have a lovely evening, day, whatever, and goodbye.